All right, so today we have this 2015 uh, A1398 that does not turn on. Uh, so the first thing to do is just see what this does or, and uh, make a measurement of a couple rails. So we plug in the charger. We do get a green light. We get no fan spin. Now, I want to go over something. Um, on these 2015 ports, it's super important if you're using an aftermarket charger or if you're using your DC power supply as a charger. So if you're using your DC power supply as a charger, oftentimes these boards will not turn on because PM bat low L needs to be asserted in order for the board to turn on. If that is not asserted, it, there, there's some weird communication between the SMC and the charger, and if it does not see that communication there, um, it will not send out uh, PM bat low L, and you will not get PM sleep S4L, which is required for um, power on. So the first rail I want to check, as always, is going to be PP Bus G3 Hot. Um, so PP Bus G3 Hot is going to show up right here or several places on the board, and that's a good time for my meter to show my, the battery icon. And PP Bus G3 Hot is 12.6 volts. Uh, I better go change the batteries in this, but 12.6 volts means that um, we have our main power rail, but there's no load on it. So typically when the board starts to turn on, this will drop to either 12.59 volts or 12.6 volts. I mean 12.55 volts. So the fact that it's 12.60 volts makes me think that there's something going on relatively high up in the power up sequence that's preventing the board from using a lot of power. So really important, if you're using an aftermarket charger or your DC power supply on these 2015 A1398 boards, um, you need to check in the enclosure with the battery connected if you're not getting any power. So I am just, the board will still auto start um, with the charger plugged in, but you need to check with the battery connected. So I am going to plug in the battery here in the enclosure. So battery is connected. And I'm gonna plug in our charger and see if there's any change in symptoms. So we will get a fan, sp a fan spin on this particular board. Uh, the older, the uh, 13 inch will not get fan spin, but the uh, 15 inch will, and we have no fan spin. Give it about 10 seconds or so. Sometimes they're a little bit delayed. But yeah, we have no fan spin here. So our next step is to start checking our power rails. Now, I kind of want to jump ahead. I want to see um, if PM Sleep S4L is present. So many of you guys know what PM Sleep S4L is. Um, that is a signal asserted by the PCH that will wake the machine into an S4 power state. Um, as power states go, you need S5 before S4. You need S4 before S3, you need um, S3 before SO. Many of you guys already know that. Anyway, PM Sleep S4L is going to show up in this area of the board. I know there's some experience, but I'll go ahead and show you guys right here. So PM Sleep S4L will be, let's see, can I just wing it? Yep, PM Sleep S4L. It's going to be on this resistor right here. So we will go back to our board, our charger is plugged in. And we get zero volts. All right, so now we know which side of the power um, up sequence our issue is. It's going to be either PM Sleep S4L or something before PM Sleep S4L. So what do we need for PM Sleep S4L assertion? We need a lot of things. We need a whole lot of signals from the PCH. We need a whole lot of conditions to be present. And one of those conditions is going to be the presence of the S5 rails. Now, the main rails I'm talking about here are going to be PP33 S5 and PP5 V S5. Um, both of those rails are going to be created by the TPS uh, 51980. So I want to go ahead and check both PP5 V S5 and PP33 um, S5. I will go back to my display capture here and we will search for both of these here. So uh, PP5 V S5 is going to show up on the side of the board on C uh, 55 C7505. Now here's our chip right here. Now what do we see here? Shut off my display capture. So we see pretty much nothing here. But there's this little spot of something there. Um, hard to say what that might be. It might be nothing. Um, but let's see if we have PP5 VS5 that shows up right here. And that is 5.022 volts and steady. So that is present. Our next one is going to be PP3 V3 S5. And that will be on R7562 or C, um, C3, 
80-30. So just display capture to show you guys where I'm measuring. I'm going to measure either here or here. This is a bigger point, so I'll measure right there. And we will see if that's present. So... That is zero volts, so this is most likely going to be our problem right here. We need, obviously, a voltage above zero for this to work. So it's common for there to be a short on this rail from a capacitor or um, a capacitor or a failed switch, and there is no short there. It is open line. So now we need to dig into how this rail is generated. So let's go ahead and have a look at the schematic right here. So I'm going to pull up the schematic, and we're going to look at um, um, U7501. It looks like my PDF did not open here. All right, so here's our schematic right here. And just looking at the chip, you know, you don't even really need to know too much about this circuit. We see we have a few things called EN. Well, we can infer that EN means enable. We have another one here, so we have PP5ES4EN. This is going to be derived off of PM Sleep S4L, so we're not going to worry about this. We have SMC PMG2EN, which is going to be the enable signal for both the um, 5 volt and 3.3 volt rail. Usually, if this is missing, we'll have uh, both enable rails, both rails missing. In this case, we do have. Uh, one rail, so I'm not going to think we're going to have an issue on this rail. And then we have right here PP3V3S5EN. Hmm. Wonder if that might have anything to do with our problem, since we are missing PP3V3S5. Let's go ahead and see um, what this is. Come on, Paul. All right. Should show up on our board view now, so I'm going to minimize this, and we will check voltage on that enable signal. And we're also going to figure out where this comes from. So we have, oh, this does come from SMC PMG2EN. So this is, go, it's just going to be a resistor. It's just going to be a current limiting resistor. It's probably going to be a 10K or something. Let's see what actual value this is because I'm curious. 100 ohm. Okay. So it's going to be 100 ohm. So we have a few different, th we have a few different possibilities here. We may have a short um, on in this chip, which uh, which blew this resistor, um, we may be missing SMC PMG2 EN, or we might have something else going on here. So my guess is going to be that this chip died, caused a short, and blew this resistor. Let's see if I'm right. I may not be right, but let's see. So let's go ahead and check voltage on that one resistor. So where is it here? Here's our resistor. That looks totally unremarkable. So let's see if that's even present. So if we have our enable, then we could just jump ahead and replace that chip because the chip is being told to turn on. That light switch is coming on, but it's not. nothing's happening. So that's most likely going to be our problem if we have voltage right here. So, And I have 3.426 volts. As it did it cycle here? Hang on. 3.426 volts. All right, so our TPS 50, um, 50, 51980 is not is being told to turn on, but it is not outputting uh, that rail. Now, this chip is very widely available. It's used on many MacBook boards all the way up until the um, last pre-M1 version, um, and it rarely fails. But again, there's this little piece of, of something right here that's most likely going to be our problem. So I'm going to put some flux around this chip. Get my hot air on. That doesn't even look like corrosion. It just looks like a little bit of dirt. Aha, look at this. I was wrong. That is corrosion. Got under that chip. See that? That is corrosion right there. And that is most likely killed that chip. So, let's see. What was this on? Alright, it's no... It's no... Um, 
it's no 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 wonder why this chip died if we look at the schematic here i know i'm not making much sense right now i'm pretty tired today but we have ppvin s5 hs other 5 volt i sense whatever this is pp bus g3 out this is a 12.5 a 12 volt rail a 12.6 volt rail and here is one of our gate drivers for um pp 3 v 3 s5 so it's no wonder how this chip chip died if you have a voltage that's one to three volts and you shove 12 volts into it it's not going to like that um, so that's, this is, I'm fairly confident now that this chip is going to be our problem. Anyway, let's clean this up and put a new chip on here. See how bad this corrosion is. Yeah, that's, that's, that's decently bad. So we can see here it kind of ate away at, um, this pin right here. See, we see the exposed copper. So we're gonna need to wick this solder up and place new. Anytime there is, anytime there's, there's no corrosion, I'll usually just reuse this old solder. But in this case, um, there is some corrosion there, so I want to take care of that. I'm just gonna get my soldering iron. I'm going to feed some leaded solder in there, and then we will wick it all up. Get our wick. Nice clean pads now. This new Amtec flux is really, really good. Let's go grab a new chip. This chip is used on many, many, many boards, so it should not be hard for you to find this. It's in place. Should be good. I don't like to push them down unless I have to. Because um, it's kind of a mess. And all pins look good. So if there's any pins that that look outwardly bad, I will push them down to resolder. But that looks really good, so I'm not going to push that down if I don't have to. Yes, that does increase the risk of some voiding on the center pad. Uh, but a little bit of voiding on the center pad isn't really going to be an issue anyway. Um, so you don't, you don't really have to worry. Um, I generally, I really don't like to push them down. Um, it just, I just don't like it. There's no real no reason. But if I don't have to do it, I don't do it. Um, so let's let this cool down for a second and let's see what we get. All right, board is cooled for about like 45 seconds or so. Let's plug in our charger and let's see what we get. We get green light, orange light, SMC just reset. It's orange again. And that is a spinning fan. So this appears to be fixed. And with the real test is going to be what will happen in the enclosure um, should work totally fine. Um, I'm going to ultrasonically clean this board because this did not look like liquid ingress. It looked like a piece of dirt um, that kind of got some condensation in it and corroded. Um, so if it happened on that chip, it may have happened elsewhere. And I definitely want to rule that out. Um, so ultrasonic cleaning will ensure that there's no corrosion left behind anywhere. Um, but otherwise, this should be good. So let's go ahead and throw this back in the enclosure and let's see what we get. All right, um, our machine is back in the enclosure here. Let's plug in our charger. I don't expect to see any different results, but I want to make sure that it boots fully into the operating system. We get fan spin, and hopefully chime, and that's an image. You can't see it, but definitely has backlight, and in order for you to have backlight, you need image. 
um, and boots into an operating system. So this appears to be fixed, and uh, thank you for watching.